Well, the most common things that we're going to factor are actually trinomials. And that's going to be things that basically have the shape. We're going to have something squared in it. We're going to have just a something sort of alone. And then we'll just have a constant. And we have to try to factor it into two factors. And actually, uh, this is where you sort of undo all the foiling stuff that we do when we actually multiply out two binomials. So let me sort of give you a sense of the theme of this and some pointers. And let me just do a whole bunch of examples so you can sort of remind yourself of how all this goes. Suppose that we take a look at the following. We want to factor 3 x squared minus x minus 4. OK, now the first thing you might want to do, which once you sort of get in the habit of it, can be really quick, is to go through all the easy things. First of all, is there anything I can pull out of all of them? Is there any kind of common factor in all these monomials? Answer, no, because this only has a factor of 2 and 4. This has only x. This has a 3 and an x. I can't pull anything out. Any grouping possibilities? I can group out an x here, but then I'm still left with that 4 dangling in the wind. So this doesn't look too good. So let's just see if we can try to, to factor this and say, well, what would it look like to factor this? Well, it would have two pieces if it were to be factorable. So let me actually try to write in those two pieces here. And these are both going to be binomials. There are going to be two pieces to this, two pieces to this. And now what are we going to do? I'm going to want those two pieces to have the property that when I foil it all out, you know, doom, 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 it's going to equal this. So let's just think through how that's going to play out and the possibilities. Well, the first two terms here, I'd want them to be 3x squared. Now, there are a lot of ways of breaking this up. I could break it up, like, for example, a 3 here and an x squared here. That would work. I could put in a, a 3x and an x here. I could put in an x and a, and a 3x here, and so forth. I could do a lot of possibilities here. In fact, there's even more exotic ones, but I won't even think about those right now. Let me try some easy one. Actually, putting in a 3 and an x squared here is not a great idea, only because then later on in life when I'm doing the inside stuff and the outside stuff, I'm going to get some x squared somewhere in here. And, and that actually might not play out too well, since this is the only x squared I have. So what I traditionally try to do is to break up the x squared by putting some of the x here and the other part of the x here. So let me put a 3x here and an x here. Now, by the way, I am not giving any kind of warranty or guarantee that this is always going to work. But this is the way most of these things tend to go. So I'm trying to show you a general way of starting to think about it and seeing if it works. If this doesn't work, you'll have to try something else. So don't panic. OK, anyway, notice this has the, the pleasant property that when I multiply these two things out, I do get that first term. OK, but now I've got to get everything else to work out. Now, how am I going to get everything else to work out? Well, let's see. Um, these two terms have to multiply to hopefully give me the minus 4. Now, if you think about that for a second, the product of two numbers here is going to be negative. That tells me that the signs of these numbers have to be opposite. You see that? Because if they're both positive, then that product would be positive. And if they were both negative, that product would be positive. So in fact, what I have to do is have opposite signs. Okay? And it has to be two numbers whose product is 4. Well, there are a lot of possibilities. There's 4 and 1. There's uh, 2 and 2. There's all sorts of possibilities. So what we have to do now is think about which possibility is going to give us everything else. Let's think of the 2 and 2 possibility for a second. Imagine I write in a 2 here and a 2 here. Can you see them in invisible ink? There they are. What would happen? I would get the 4 over here, but this would give me a, a 2x. And this would give me a 6x. And the question is, is there any way to combine a 6x and a 2x and make it into just a, an x by itself, or a negative x? And if you have a 6x and if you add it to 2x or if you subtract it from 2x, I'm not going to get it. So that 2, 2 factor doesn't look too good. So it's probably going to be a 1 and a 4 factor. That's the next thing I'm going to try. It may not be, by the way. I want to point out it may not. This may not be factorable. But if it's going to be factorable in an easy, nice way, then probably we're going to have a 1 and a 4 thing. But I've got to consider all the possible signs. For example, 1 minus 4, minus 1, 4, and then putting the 4 here, maybe. 4 uh, minus 1, and then minus 4, 1. OK, a lot of things to, uh, to check. And let me show you how I would actually check those things. So let me write the problem back here. This problem is 3x squared minus x minus 4. And let me write down all those cases I have to consider for that, for that bottom thing. Because here's where we are right now. We have this. We know it's going to look something like that. And now what I want to do is figure out what's going to go in these holes. Well, what are the possibilities? Well, I could put in a, a plus 1. But then I have to put a minus 4 here. I could put a minus 1 and then put a 4 here. I could put a 4 here and a minus 1 here. These are positive. 
And then I could put in a minus 4 and then a plus 1 here. Those are all the four possibilities of putting the two different signs in different places. You see, they're all different possibilities. We know the 2, 2 thing can't happen because I can't get that middle term. And now what I'm going to do is just sort of go by trial and error and see which one of these actually might give us the answer. Maybe none of them will, but let's try. So the first one, if I do this, how would that look? Well, let's see. The first terms give me the first term here. The inside term gives me a plus x. The outside term gives me a minus 12x. So that combines to give a minus... 11x. So already I can stop the game. I know that's not right. So let's move on. What about here? Well, in this case, the, the first two terms, of course, are good. The inside term, I get a minus x. The outside term, now I get a plus 12x. That gives me a plus 11x. Hold the presses. We're done. Doesn't work. Let's go there. This might not be factorable, folks. Who knows? Uh, here, what I see is the first term is OK. Then I have a 4x, and then I have a minus 3x. So 4x minus 3x is actually plus x. So close. Do you see it? It's still plus, and I need minus. So even though I don't want to, I have to throw it away and hope for the best down here. Let's see what happens here. Here I see a 3x squared. Here I see a minus 4x. Here I see a plus 3x. And a minus 4x plus 3x is a minus x. And the last two terms give me the minus 4. This is actually a correct factorization. Great. So in fact, this is the way that, that one can think about trying to factor a trinomial into two binomials. There's two terms in each of these things. And the idea is to break up that, that term with the squared in it in a, in a reasonable way, and then try to fiddle with the constant term, thinking about the signs, and seeing how the signs would play out to make this thing work, and then trying the possible cases. Now, this is quite an ex ex exorbitant way of doing this. In reality, you might actually be able to try them pretty quickly once you get into the hang of it. OK, let's try another example together and practice a couple more of these. So uh, let's consider the following. 6y squared minus 48y minus 120. OK, a lot of big numbers there, at least big for me. And so I'm getting a little bit nervous about this. Uh, but notice something. Hey, wait a minute. I can factor something out of all of these terms. And that would actually make my work a lot easier. Now, what can I factor out? Well, I can factor out um, a 6 from here. I can factor out a 6 from here. Can I factor a 6 from here out? Well, let's see. I can certainly factor out a 2. Can I factor out a 3, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12? Yes, I should be able to factor out a 6 from here. So let me first of all pull out the greatest common factor. See how I'm trying to do that to save myself some effort? If I pull out this, uh, a 6 from here, I think I'm left with just an 8. And if I pull out a 6 from here, I think I'm just left with 20. OK, now we're talking my language, because this is something I can actually deal with. So let's see, and this equals, and let's see what this equals. So I keep that 6 in front, though. And now I'm going to hope that this may be factored into two pieces. The y squared, I'm going to put a y and a y here. And now what about uh, the last term? Well, see, the last term is negative. So I know I'm going to have opposite signs. But notice that since these are the exact same things, y and y, remember before it was 3x and x, since these are the same, it doesn't make a difference how I put them down. I just have to make sure they're opposite. So I'll put, let's say, plus here and minus here. OK, and now what I need to have is two numbers that multiply to give me 20. But then when they combine in this fashion, inside, outside, they give me minus 8. So let's try some possibilities. For example, there's 2 and 10. So if I put in 10 here and 2 here, notice that product is negative 20. But inside I have positive 10. Outside I have negative 2. That gives me a positive 8. So close. That closeness tells me maybe I should do this. Flip them. So let's actually put the 2 here and the 10 here. And notice the outside term is minus 10y. Inside term is plus 2y. I get the minus 8y. The last two terms, minus 20. Great. So there's the correct factorization with the 6 there, with the 6 there. Let's try a little more exotic one. How about this? 5r to the 4th minus 7r squared s minus 6s squared. Now this one, there's something to the 4th. It looks like maybe we can't even do this trick. But the thing to notice here is that there's something to the 4th, but then there's also that same thing squared. So in our minds, we could think about it this way. This is sort of a blop thing here, right? Blop right here. And this is sort of the blop squared. 
So if I think about it that way, then I do have all squares there, even though it looks like a fourth. Let me actually write that out so you can see that this is just a camouflage square. You see, it's something squared, and then minus that same something, unsquared. You see, so this is just now something. Let's just treat it as one big variable, one big blob, and let's try to factor. Any common factors here? I don't see any, so I'm going to hope this can factor. I see a 5 something squared, so I'm going to try 5 something and then just the something. Notice that the something is whatever is in here. You see how I just brought that down? Because the product is 5 something squared, so 5 r squared squared, 5 r squared squared, so that's the r to the fourth. Okay, uh, I see a negative sign again, so that means I'm going to switch signs, but now I've got to be careful where to put the signs because these aren't the same. So it could be plus minus or it could be minus plus. I don't know, but at the end of the day, these terms have to give me this, minus 6s squared. So I hope that I should have an s here at least. And now I've got to figure out factors of 6 that combined with this 5, it's now getting pretty complicated, to give me this minus 7. Well, how should that play out? Well, let's see. Some factors for 6 would be, for example, uh, 3 and 2. There's also 6 and 1. So we could try 6 and 1 here and here, and, and then, then 3 and 2 here and here and so forth. Let's see what happens if we put in, let's say, the 2 here and a 3 here. So visualize a 2 right here and a 3 right here. In fact, maybe I have some of these things. Hold on, let me just check here in my plethora of tricks. I might have a 3 and a 2. I've got a 5, but not very useful. And do I have a 3? I've got a little teeny 3. Oh, look at this. A little teeny 3. And let's see. Oh, I've got a little teeny 2. Okay. Well, just for fun, let's just do that. So let's visualize a little teeny, because we're not sure. See, if you're uncertain, write small. No, that's actually false. If you're uncertain, write big. That was just a joke. Okay. Suppose we put this in here. Now, remember we have to put in opposite signs. So if I put in a plus here, let's say, and a minus here, let's see what happens. The end of the day, we do get the minus 6s squared, so that looks good. Now, what's the inside term? Remember, we have a plus here now and a minus here. This would be a plus a 2sr squared. And then here I have a minus 15sr squared. Minus 15 plus 2 does not equal minus 7, so that doesn't look too good. Uh, let's try to reverse these roles. So I still have the plus sign here. I'll write in the plus sign for you, the minus here. Let's see what happens here. Here I have a 3sr squared, and here I have a minus 10sr squared. So minus 10sr squared plus 3sr squared is, yeah, minus 7sr squared. So this is great. So in fact, this is the right factorization. I can take off these little pathetic 3s and 2s and replace them by their larger font counterpart. And now I've actually factored this correctly. And a great thing to do, by the way, a really great thing to do is to check your answer. Let's quickly check really fast. This times this, foiling, is 5r to the fourth. Perfect. The inside term gives me a plus 3r squared s. The outside term gives me a minus 10r squared s. They combine to give minus 7r squared s. The last times the last is a minus 6s squared, as we'd hope. So in fact, this is factored correctly. Neat. Now, uh, let me just say one last thing about this. And that is, let's look at something that's a lot easier than this. Let's look at the following. How about x squared uh, minus 5x plus 6? And I want to factor this real fast because I want to now show you what you do when there's a positive sign here. When there's a positive sign here, everything is the same, except you can actually say a little bit more. The x squared I'm going to break up as x and x. But now I know it's a positive sign, but there's two possibilities. Because they can either, both these numbers can either both be positive, in which case their product is positive, or they can both be negative. But here's a great little device to help you. I can actually tell you what the answer is by looking at this next term here. Because see, the, the terms have to combine to give this value, right? They have to add up to give this value. Well, if they were both positive here, if I have a positive thing plus a positive thing, I can't make it negative. So in fact, if I see a positive here, then I know the signs will have to be the same, and that sign will actually be whatever's here. So since this is a negative, I know these are the same, and they're both negative. It's a great trick. If this were a positive here, by the way, then I would know these would both be positive. So if you, see a, if you see a positive out here, that means same sign over here, and the sign will be whatever this is. 
If you see a negative, you've got to look at all the possible cases of plus and minus, and you don't know what's going on, no matter what this is. And here, um, I can put in a 2 and a 3 very quickly, and you'll see that happily, I have an x squared, minus 2x, minus 3x is minus 5x, and minus 2 times minus 3 is happily a plus 6, this factors. So when this is positive, you know the signs will be the same, and that same sign will equal whatever that sign this is. When they're negative, you're going to have staggering signs, and they can go any which way you can.